And in today's video, we're going to talk about why I breed tegus, um, why they fit my life, why I like them so much. And so we're going to jump up in the loft. I'm going to pull out some adults for you guys as we talk and hope you guys enjoy the video. It's morning time. It's early in the morning. Wes is up and <laughs> yeah, that's the camera. And we're sitting out here by the turtle ponds and yeah, I thought I'd show you guys what it looks like to be one years old and in love with turtles. You like going in there? And he knows, this is the box turtle pen. He knows what we do when we see a turtle. Yep, that's what we do. We point at it. You see any turtles? You see, where, where? Oh, you're over here? He did see one. It crawled down in there. He saw one. Where are they? Well, we're going to feed them, right? So we got the food right here. I feed them um, the Garden State tortoise, uh, Garden State box turtle diet. So it's just a meat mix, very similar to what the tegus get. And we just use this ice cream scoop here. And I've got a few feeding stones. One, two. Should we do another one? <laughs> I got it. Let's go over here. One, two, three. Oh, look at this one. I see one. Right there. Come here. Come here. Look right there. Look, I think he'll come out and say hi. Should we have him come out? Look. A turtle. Yeah. Say bye. Say bye, turtle. He's moving away. Where's he going? <laughs> yeah. Where's he going? Into the water. Because I am just so thankful. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about what my morning routines used to look like. And it used to look like an alarm clock um, forcing myself to get out of bed and sometimes crying on my way to work because I didn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't want to leave my family every single day, all day, and then come home exhausted. And the fact that this is what my morning routine looks like, I get to wake up, <clears throat> hang out with my kids, <sighs> hang out with reptiles, it's, it's the dream. Tegus will burrow underground and that is where they will spend the entirety of the winter months. Now, in captivity, I do my best to replicate that. And so what we're gonna see is a cooled room and tegus that are in tubs, kind of like they're buried underground. Now, during the spring and summer months, I wanna show you guys how we keep our tegus. Here is an example of one of the enclosures that we have here. They're large, they're naturalistic. Um, I believe they're set up perfectly to help the tegus live their best life and thrive in captivity. A thing about me is if the animals aren't happy, I'm not happy. I, I don't enjoy keeping animals poorly. I wanna keep all my reptiles the best I can and I wanna see them doing their natural behaviors. And so if that vibes with you and that's something that you can relate to, then subscribe to the channel and Let's go check out these tegus right now. So for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, this is our reptile room. This is the shed, or my son called it a cabin the other day. I, I like that better, the reptile cabin. So much better than reptile shed. But what we did to create a place for the tegus during the winter is this was just a regular loft over here and we closed in the front, insulated it, added an AC unit and so now it is 
their cooled space for winter. So we're gonna climb this ladder and go up there and check them out. All right, so like I said, we're checking on Tegus today, doing some health checks, what I like to look for. All right, in here we've got the big tribrid. It's the big tribrid male. Check this guy out. I love, I love the slow tongue flicks that you get during brumation. What a big tegu to check out as our first one. This is the tribrid male. We saw his girlfriend in the last video and he is nice and cool to the touch up against my warm skin. He feels nice and cool, but he's, he looks perfect. What I'm looking for is um, just like their overall body condition. I am a major thing that I'm looking for is breathing. I want to make sure that I can't hear them breathing. I want it, it should be nice and quiet. If you hear any bubbling or gurgling or anything like that, then I would immediately take them out of brumation and heat them up so that they can fight that respiratory infection. Look at this nice, dark, purple female. Also a really large tegu. She is big. It's a big girl. We did not breed her this year, but she is one that I would love to breed next season. We shall see. Big girl, beautiful Hetfer albino. I would love to see what she could produce. Just got to figure out what male to breed her with. I've got some ideas. Look at her face. Amazing. Okay, that's two Tegus. <laughs> Let's check on a third. Ooh, okay. This one, whoever's in here is gigantic. <laughs> We got one. We got a, a grumpy one. Move these back. Now, this one's hissing. I don't know if, you, if the camera's picking that noise up. In this box, we've got a crime scene. And he is, let's see how he's doing. Another really big tegu. This guy is awesome. Everybody loves crime scene. Whew, he's heavy and he's just chilling in this box. Look at this guy. Really amazing looking tegu. Big, big boy. We have some babies from him and Ginger still available. I believe we just have females left. Wow. Impressive Tegu. Very fortunate to have him in my collection. He came over from Dyna Animal. Let's get him laid back out how he was in the box. I knew that was a big one. Okay, let's get some more. Let's see what else we got up here. And then I was going to talk to you guys about why I breed Tegus. Well, we're looking at one of the reasons. Um, okay, let me, let me turn this one around. One of the reasons why I chose to work with Tegus is because they do brewmate. And I really wanted something, this is kind of like a two-part reason, I really wanted something that I could keep outside. Okay, before Tegus, I bred leopard geckos and I bred bearded dragons. I enjoyed them a lot. I love them. I might get back into them again someday, but I wanted something hardier, much hardier and something that I could keep outside without worrying about them being <laughs> eaten or killed by fire ants or many other things. And so I started doing some research and I fell in love with Tegus. I loved their appearance. They're like little bulldogs. Let me pull this guy out and then we'll get back into that. Here is Thor. Thor, our black and white male. This guy is quite the breeder. 
He did amazing for us this year, produced a bunch of babies, got some battle wounds from it. <laughs> but he is doing fantastic. He's actually, he was one of the first Tegus to go down into brumation. So we're gonna just leave him be. He already has been brumating for two months. He started outside in the warm weather. He's went down. Like I said in the last video, it's not all about temperature. It's about the daylight cycle. So, but, but yeah, I, I wanted a reptile that was really hardy that I could keep outside. And, um, because of where I live in East Texas, we get cold winters. And so I wasn't sure what I was going to do or who I was going to breed or what, but I, I found tegus and I just thought about it and thought about it. And you know what? A lizard that I think looks super impressive, really hardy, but also I can keep them outside during spring and summer and bring them in during the winter. It's just, it was the perfect lizard for me. It really was. And so this one, this is an impressive take you, but I sold all my collection. I sold all the bearded dragons, all the leopard geckos, and I bought some tegus and then it just snowballed from there. Look at that girl. Really amazing red female, incredible colors. I love this girl. Look at that. She is, I, I, she's, she's fantastic. Hopefully the camera is picking up her colors and her size. Really big girl. One of the biggest females in my entire collection. A lot of people would probably think this is a male, but nope, just a big girl, right? You're a big girl. So here she is. So nice. Everyone so far is looking perfectly healthy. They sound healthy. They sound perfect. So it's going good. But yeah, Tegus, um, I love how hardy they are. Like they are really tough lizard. They really are. Um, I liked the variety. I loved how there's, depending on your life and what you're looking for, you can get tegus that are really massive and tegus that are a little smaller like this one here. This girl here, much smaller. This is an adult. Breeding, producing albino blue tegu, and she she's really dirty right now, <laughs> but she's much smaller, so much smaller, and so I think that's fantastic with tegus. You can, if you're after a really giant lizard, you can have that, and if you're after something a little bit on the smaller side, you can have that as well. But yeah, so I got my first few tegus. I started off getting two. They're my first two tegus. Um, they were blues. And then I quickly, right after I got those first two, I picked up two more Chicoans. And they were the opposite. They were massive, really big tegus. And um, it took me several years to raise them up and start producing my own. That was a very important part of the journey, was just figuring things out on a small scale for me. But okay, and here we have Ginger. We bred her to crime scene, that really big red male, and we have babies from them. She is sleeping deep in there, but she, she sounds good. She feels good. You can kind of feel them breathing if you put your hand right here. And if there's anything raspy in there, I think I would feel that. I typically don't have any problems with them brumating or whatever. Like I said, they're hardy animals. But I like to be sure, make sure that they sound good. And she does, she does. We're gonna lay her back in here. Cover her back up. 
get another box. Okay, this is a high black female. This is a female produced from Plague and Marcel. Um, she's two years old now. She will probably ble breed for us next season. But look at her. She is fantastic. Look at that dark head. Let's see if we can get a close up. Oh yeah. But she's a pretty big girl. She still has some growing left, but really nice. So happy to have her in our entire line of high blacks. They're amazing. Some of my favorites, if not my favorites. Okay. Let's see who's in this last box over here. I'm gonna make this stack a little shorter. Okay. Well, we were just talking about him. This is Payload. This is one of the first Tegus I got. This is my first big Tegu that I got. This is a Chicoan. This is Payload. And he is just doing fantastic. Right here. Let's get that out of your mouth. <laughs> but yeah, big Payload, the one and only. This guy is amazing. He has a fantastic personality. He's part of the reason why I just fell in love with Tegus, really. He's he's great. We built a good relationship over the last several years. And he just wants to go back to sleep. I'm gonna set these cups back over here. So we've looked at a lot of different kinds of Tegus. We've seen um, reds. We saw albino blues. We've seen the high blacks. We've seen a bunch of tegus. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. We're gonna go through a few more tubs, and then after this, I'm gonna answer some of you guys' questions about brumation from the last video. So what are some reasons why you guys are interested in tegus? Leave that in the comments below. I really like reading about that stuff, hearing about what drew people in to working with Tegus. All right, first tub over here, first tub of the new stack, we've got Pumpkin. Owned her for many years as well. She was one of my original Tegus. Beautiful, beautiful red female. She's produced some amazing babies for us. And she is, She's got some good size to her. She really, she's grown into a beautiful adult female. And yeah, she's a nice one. So we're gonna put her back in. Let her go back to sleep. She's got some thick shed coming. A little piece hanging off, you guys see that? Just leave that in the box. <laughs> All right, two more totes. Here is a Chicoan Blue Cross female. We bred her this year. We got some good eggs out of her. And she is doing great. She looks great. She sounds great. Check her out. All right. Over. And for our last one that we're going to look at, ooh, ooh, it's a treat. You guys love the high blacks. And in here, I've have, I have a high black male. It's not the plague. You're going to think it's the plague. And it, those of you that don't know, the plague is our really big, super dark male that kind of started the high black line. And here is his son. And look at this guy. Wow. Oh my gosh. I love this boy. What's up, boy? 
I've had him since he was a baby. He was produced by Dyna Animal. I got him before I got Plague because I didn't plan on getting Plague. So I was starting my own line and Greg was helping me get started and hooked it up with this guy and then that high black female we looked at a bit ago. Wow. And this guy is just, he, he, he's amazing. Look at this animal that I get to hold. I feel so fortunate to own these tegus. I really do. I love them so much. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my goodness. How are you doing? Huh? He looks perfect. He sounds perfect. And you are beautiful. You know that? Man. Impressive. This is proof that the high black line produces. They produce some really dark babies every year. So we're going to slide those back. And now we're going to head back downstairs and I'm going to answer some of those brumation questions. All right. So in the last video, i um, showing you guys the loft and just talking about brumation. I opened it up for some questions in the comments below. And so I'm going to kind of go over those. We had some questions asked. The first one I'm going to go over is from Roxanne. She said, my blue tegu from Iris and Topaz that she bought from us this season. Um, she's around two and a half months old and she's asking is, should she expect her to go down this winter? Um, Roxanne, I would say young tegus can brumate, okay? But as far as my experience goes, blue tegus are your least likely to brumate, um, especially their first year, okay? So uh, out of all the tegus brumating inside, I don't believe any of our blues are brumating at all, any of the, the blues that we produce this season. So you may notice her slowing down, but I doubt I highly doubt that you get a full-on like brumation from her this year. Um, Brick Thompson, he was just asking about the rack system that we use for the babies. A lot of people ask about that. I'm going to do a video on the rack system soon and show you guys kind of where I got it and how it works. So we'll get to that soon. Um, uh, Geeky Gecko Creations asked, do you wake? up the tegus at all well in this video you guys saw that i do go in there and i check on them but i'm not necessarily you know i wake them up here and there but other than the occasional checkup you know which happens around once a month or so i try to see how they're doing i don't really wake them up too much leanne's repetarium said how are you cooling the loft well we we have a a portable um air conditioner that we use to cool the loft we originally bought it. I didn't buy it for the loft originally. I kind of used what I had when I put that loft together, but we got it for our house just for the summer. Um, we like to have at least one room that's just really cold. <laughs> that way when you're working outside, you can go cool off. But then in the winter, we pull it out and use it in the loft. The J Lamar, he asked, what temps do you think are the sweet spots to keep them at? Uh, the temperatures I like to keep mine at are around 55 degrees okay for the winter um, and what temps for outside are your cutoff times uh, I bought mine in once we started hitting in the lower or mid 30s as their own temperature was starting to dip below 50 so for me that I, I not only do I look at the temperature but I look at the precipitation okay the the wetness is what is dangerous when it gets cold so if you have a nice hide that stays completely dry all the time and you know that your tegu's in there, then you can let it dip down into the 30s and they can be fine. You just gotta look at your weather the next day. You know, like, is it staying cold all the time or is the sun coming out the next day? Is it raining? All of those things play a factor in keeping your tegu's outside in cooler weather. Now for me, um, I'm fine leaving my tegus out in the 40s. So all the way down, even 39, 38, I can still keep them outside. But if it's gonna rain and it's in the low 40s or high 30s, I'm bringing them inside, okay? So rain and cold, I don't play around with. I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. So I bring them in. Um, but if it's getting down to, let's say 38 degrees, but the next day I see that the sun's out and it's gonna be 60s, which happens a lot here in Texas, then I know that they'll be fine. They can handle that and they can handle those cooler temperatures. But you know, a lot of it comes down to the quality of your hide and the other factors in your weather. So just keep that in mind. 
Michelle, she said um, she's glad we're making videos again. I am too. Um, but she asked, what is the lowest temperature they can call tolerate during brumation? Well, we touched on that just a little bit ago. She asked if I put a water dish inside the tubs with them. I do not. Now, some people will wake their tegus up and offer them water. I've done that in the past, and then I've also not done that. And I had success both ways and didn't lose any animals. Um, so, so you can wake them up, you can soak them, you can, or you can just let them sleep. So I do believe in the wild on warmer days, they do come out and get a drink of water during brumation sometimes. So it's not a bad thing to offer. But I just, I wouldn't keep water in the tub with them because they will just flip it over and having a wet tub can be very dangerous. Marcus and Michelle, thank you guys for leaving the comment and I can't wait to see your girl and how she's looking. Send me some pictures. So this subscriber said that they're having some issues with their tegu staying down. Um, their big concern is that he's lost too much weight to go down now. So if your tegu is in brumation and losing weight, then something's not right. I would recommend pulling that tegu out of brumation and you know, keeping your lights on for 12 hours a day, not letting it go down. If it's getting thin, then um, as you can see in today's video, all of my tegus, yes, they're, they're empty in their stomach. So their stomach is, is empty and like they may appear thin in that area, but their tail is nice and thick. They're nice, healthy tegus. If you're picking up your tegu during brumation and it is losing weight, then that is something to be concerned about and something that definitely needs attention. I would suggest talking to your vet and figuring something out. But in the meantime, continue offering food and I would encourage the animal not to go down. Okay, and if, if your tegu is losing weight during brumation, it could be from a, several different reasons. It could be from parasites. It could be from um, temperatures being too warm. If, it's, if, they're, if they're not able to cool down and the temperatures are warm, then their metabolism is continuing to, to go because they're, they're not cool. And so they're gonna continue burning that energy and the resources and it could become a dangerous situation if they get too thin during brumation. But if your tegu is just losing some girth in his stomach and his bones aren't protruding and his tail is nice and thick, then it, it without seeing pictures and just that description, I would say that you have a healthy tegu that looks normal and is just going into brumation like any tegu would. And, and they do, they can't go into brumation with a full stomach of food because that food will rot inside of them because without heat, they can't digest it properly. So if they go into brumation, with food in their system, that is not a good idea and it could result in a dead tegu. So make sure that they haven't eaten. I like to not offer mine food for a minimum of two weeks and offer some, some different opportunity to soak and make sure that they completely clear out their system before I move them into the cool loft. Thank you guys for watching another Rose City Reptiles video. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. I have some exciting videos planned for this winter. Um, so yeah, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. Hit that bell notification, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next Rose City Reptiles video. Bye.